The second R stands for reduce. It's step two, so you want to reduce what you need, but you can't refuse. So this R is really about reducing needless consumption. It's all about lightening your load and the planet's load. So when you reduce your consumption, you aren't unnecessarily extracting new environmental resources from the earth and eventually sending more trash to the dump. So this next R reminds us to, you know, to refuse and that purchasing things new should be a last resort. So if you're questioning whether or not to buy something, I want you to ask yourself these questions. The first one is, do I actually truly need this or am I being convinced that I need it because marketers and advertisers are just, are just so good and maybe it's not something that I need but something that I want. The next question is, do I already own something like this that is functional or that could be fixed that could take its place? And finally, can I find this item secondhand? So let's look at several examples. So maybe it's a new phone that you're looking at purchasing. So I'll bet that most of you need a phone to function in today's society. It's probably a necessary part of your job or your life, but does it need to be the newest model? Or can we spare some environmental resources and continue using the old phone we have or you know fix our broken screen or purchase a second-hand phone from online or from elsewhere so marketers obviously need to make money and they will go to great lengths to make sure that that happens and convince us that we need their newest product but most of the time we can actually do just fine and get what we want by being resourceful and I found over the years that by reducing my exposure to these convincing advertisements on TV and in magazines and by reducing my shopping sprees, I feel so much more content. I don't feel like I'm constantly missing out on the next best thing or that I'm to this or to that or that I'm not enough this. You know, shopping sprees kind of used to be my default activity when I was a teen and now I would much rather go hiking or swimming or exploring museums or volunteering. I guess like I attach more value to experiences over things and I also have to admit that I really enjoy scavenging in thrift stores and giving a new life to items that were once discarded. Even in the zero waste community there are zero waste influencers who sort of veer away from the first two R's of zero waste which are to refuse and to reduce. So you might find marketers who try to convince you that you need new bamboo utensils to be part of the zero waste movement because they're compostable and they won't pollute the waterways and they're cute <laughs> but before jumping on these bamboo Boo utensils, how about step one, refusing and using your existing silverware instead of extracting new resources or going to a thrift store to get utensils there and giving them a second life to save them from the waste stream. So the zero waste movement is going mainstream and I think the fact that we're seeing this practice of kind of pushing new products before secondhand products just goes to show how difficult it is to stick to our core values and make a living in our current linear economy. But there's no such thing as zero waste consumerism. So that's why I really want to emphasize this reduce principle. And if you really are at an impasse, then go ahead and consider buying it new. And then at that stage, you always want to look for the most eco-friendly option available, whether it's, you know, package free, local, recyclable, compostable, low carbon production, non-toxic, etc. So the second R basically to reduce reminds us that purchasing new is the last resort and there's no limit to your creativity here. In terms of food, you can grow your own food, you can get secondhand food by dumpster diving, you can uh, buy food from companies like Imperfect Produce that salvage ugly food that was thrown out by farmers, or you can go out and do whatever is within your comfort zone and whatever is also within your ability. So the second R to reduce, it's not about making yourself miserable either. If you want a gorgeous new necklace but you already have 20 necklaces, no one is stopping you from buying a new necklace, but purchases should be about quality over quantity. So I encourage you to ask yourself how much you love that necklace. Is it going to enrich your life or you know, are you going to be wearing it in five years? And if you want to take it further, what is it made of? Was it produced sustainably? You know, maybe you want to venture into secondhand shops so that decisions about buying items that will please you will be easier to make. So there are certain things that you have to buy new that just cannot be purchased secondhand or I wouldn't want to purchase them secondhand. So depending on your situations, food will probably fall into that category or some purchases you'll make once in a blue moon, like you'll want to purchase a new menstrual cup or new cloth pads or you'll purchase brand new sex toys and brand new condoms for safety reasons. Um, I purchased a brand new car seat, one of the only things that I ever purchased new for my daughter because I really care about car safety. And unless you know the exact history of 
a used car seat, then you're kind of taking a risk. You'll want to buy new bike helmets for the same reason, because you can't always tell by looking at them if they've been in an accident um, or if their protective qualities have been damaged. Or maybe for financial reasons, you'll want to buy a new computer or a new camera if your livelihood depends on it and that you really need the warranty. So not everything can be purchased secondhand, but I encourage you to look there first. It's really fun. So there are other ways you can reduce your consumption as well, more generally, by choosing to take your bike, by choosing public transportation, by carpooling instead of driving your car. Uh, maybe you wanna think twice before printing paper. Uh, maybe you don't need a home that's quite so big, or maybe you'd enjoy you know, a smaller home that's more adapted to your needs. So we talked about reducing consumption, so I want to talk about reducing what you already have. So when I left for college 13 years ago, my room was so full of junk. I'm talking magazines that were never read, bus tickets, old socks, junk mail, receipts, broken decoration that I was like, oh, I'll fix this, but I never did. Uh, more tote bags that you could ever use and just so much stuff. And since then, I've moved 25 times in 13 years and I grew accustomed to having few things and just bringing the bare essentials with me. And I found it super liberating to lighten my load. But even if I don't own that much stuff, it's really Really funny how quickly papers and books and gifts can just pile up. So whenever I move, I find that it's the perfect time to decide what stays and what goes. And this is the trick that I use if I'm sorting through my belongings. So if there's an item that I'm hesitant about keeping, for instance, I might think, but it was so expensive, but it was a gift. How can I get rid of this? Then I ask myself two main questions that help me determine whether or not to keep it. The first one is, when did I last use it? And then do I actually like it? And if I haven't used it in over a year and I hesitate about whether I like it, then the item is off to find a new home. And I find for myself that having less stuff has helped me realize uh, what is actually meaningful in life and to attach value to experiences over things. And I think when you choose quality over quantity, that is keeping items that you really uh, need and use, you begin thinking twice about bringing new items into your life. So when you let go of items that don't serve you by donating or selling them, you're also supporting the secondhand market. You're allowing others to use environmental resources that have already been used and extracted. Now in terms of gifts, I have to say that I'm no longer afraid of re-gifting. You're probably gonna receive a lot of gifts in your life and a lot of them you're not gonna necessarily like. They're not gonna be your cup of tea and that's okay. Uh, the person who gifted you didn't want to add clutter to your life, add inconvenience to your life. So in my book, it's better to pass these items on to someone who will really love it rather than have it sit in a closet for a decade. So I'm really honest and considerate about re-gifting. Obviously, it's easier to re-gift a pizza cutter than to re-gift a personalized necklace with your initials engraved on it. So just use your common sense here and use your tact to decide appropriately. And then in terms of sentimental items, I'm really big on capturing memories, but I also realize that I am more than my possessions. There are certain things that would be painful to part with, like I have 25 diaries from my childhood that I, that I keep, or a collection of stones from my pregnancy altar. Um, and then there are certain things that were passed down to me from my grandparents, so I decided to keep several of my absolute favorites, especially the smaller items. But I don't don't need to keep every last sentimental item to feel connected to my grandparents. That's what diaries and memories are for. So I guess I invite you to reduce what you don't need, but not to make yourself miserable either. This process should be about lightening your load and not the contrary. And then in terms of items that didn't make the cut, you can donate them or sell them. Items that are no longer of use to them can definitely be valuable to someone else. So if you're looking to make a little money, you can put your items up for sale on Craigslist, on eBay, eBay. You can have a garage sale uh, to sell them or sell them at a flea market. You can sell your nice clothes at Plato's Closet if there's one near you. Otherwise, you can donate your stuff uh, directly to friends, to family, or to your local thrift store like the Salvation Army. You can also join or host a swap party where folks will bring clothes or items that they no longer need and you can swap with them. All of this is generally for free. Um, either way, you're allowing environmental resources that have already been extracted to have a longer life and spare them from, um, from other ones to be exploited. And what about items that are too big to be transported to charity? There's lots of charities like Salvation Army that'll pick them up for free, so all you have to do is schedule a pickup time. In terms of items that are broken and no longer functional, you don't have to send them to the dump straight away. You can look for secondhand stores like uh, the Scrap Exchange in Durham is amazing. They will take your random objects and then crafters and artists will gladly take them off your hands. So. 
To recap, it's all about lightening your load and in turn, the planet's load. So this section was really about reducing your consumption by valuing existing resources before extracting new ones and looking at unnecessary purchases in your past consumption and giving those resources a second life by sending them into the secondhand market, thus reducing the demand to extract new resources.